okay. So, hello everyone. Somehow, we're already in the month of June, and that makes me a little bit ill. I'm not gonna lie. I actually don't even have words, so I'm not even, I'm not even gonna try. Anyways, <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mick. It's wrap up time. <laughs> I really don't have that much to say about this month other than the fact that I don't know where the time went. I keep saying I didn't read for the first half of the month. That's not true. I didn't read for the first week. I read three books in one week and then the last two I must have just spaced out over the last two weeks. So somehow I read five books. <laughs> I read five books this month. I feel pretty good about the books that I got to. I wish I'd gotten to more. I'm really in the summer reading mood now and I'm really excited to tackle June and I think I have a really good feeling about June as a reading month but before we really begin <laughs> with the month of June I want to wrap up the month of May. Talk about the books I read. And yeah so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and let's start with the stats. This month, like I said, I read five books. I read one adult thriller, one YA thriller, one literary fiction, and two romance. I read 1,777 pages, so definitely less than previous months, but that's okay. My average star rating was a 3.7, which is not too bad at all. And I got to four out of the seven books on my TBR, which is also not too bad considering I only read five books. So that means I only read one book that wasn't on my monthly TBR, and then I just kind of fell off and and didn't get to any more books in the month. So at least I was prioritizing my monthly TBR, we're moving in the right direction, you know? <laughs> With that being said though, um, I did only read one book for my 24 and 2024 list, which I try and read two per month. And I've now fallen behind, I've only read eight in total. I should have been at 10 at the end of this month. Ideally, I will have read 12 at the end of June. So that means I need to read four this month to catch up. I do have three on my monthly TBR, but I'm still, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure that I'll be catching up. I'm gonna try. We'll have to see. So, okay, that's it for stats. Now let's go ahead and move on to thoughts and feelings about the books that I read this month. <laughs> These first three books I'm about to talk about, I actually did read in my number generator chooses how many pages I read blog. So I had like real time updates and opinions and thoughts and stuff. I start with my opinions on the book. I feel more sure about how I feel so yeah <laughs> I'm gonna try and give you condensed versions of these first three books. So first up, we have The Fury by Alex Michalides. This is a mystery thriller, kind of a whodunit situation that takes place on an island in Greece. Essentially, we follow a group of characters that go together to this island as like a little weekend getaway situation. It's a famous actress, her best friend, her husband, her son, and then a just friend. They all go together and then there's a couple other characters. I think it's like her assistant and then like a caretaker on the island. It's one of those situations where somebody dies, there's a storm, they can't get help and they kind of have to figure out which one of them is a murderer, find out the truth, etc, etc. I usually love this concept. Like I really enjoy whodunits. I really enjoy like island settings usually. Just really, really wasn't a fan of this. First and foremost, I feel like I rambled on about this for so long in my reading blog, so I'm just gonna say really quickly. There was an unreliable narrator situation in this book. It said up front from the very beginning, he's an unreliable narrator. I just feel like there wasn't enough nuance in the unreliable narrator situation to really execute it well. Instead, I was incredibly fixated on the fact that he was an unreliable narrator and just like an overall really unlikable character. So I didn't ever let myself get invested in the story because I just kind of assumed right out the gate that he was lying about everything. So so just like the entire thing really didn't work for me. I ended up settling on two stars for this, which feels mean. I don't think I've ever rated a book two stars, at least in my booktube career. But if I'm being honest with myself, it just really didn't hit. I really didn't enjoy it. It was slow, it wasn't engaging. It just wasn't for me. So I don't think I would recommend it. It definitely wasn't it for me. I think if you like Alex Michalides and you know you like his stuff, I would give it a try because you might enjoy yourself more than I did, but I didn't. So yeah. Book number one. <laughs> okay, book number two, I read The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have been meaning to get to this series for so, so, so long because it's always just been sold to me as an adult criminal minds. And I love criminal minds. Genuinely, it's one of my favorite shows of all time. And I don't know why I didn't pick this up sooner because it was so much fun. Essentially, we follow 17 year old Cassie Hobbs that gets recruited onto this task force with the FBI where unnaturally skilled teenagers are working together to kind of solve cold cases. They're not actively working on FBI cases. Then obviously over the course of this book, to get involved in an actual case and things go from there. I had such a good time. I read it basically all in one day. I think I read like 50 pages on one day and then binged it on a Saturday when I had no plans and it was so fun, so fast paced. Cute characters, quirky characters, fun relationships starting to develop. I think there's five books in this series. And one thing about Miss Jennifer Lynn Barnes is she loves a love triangle and we get definitely the first inklings of that in this book. So very excited to continue the series and I would highly recommend if you like young adult thrillers. <laughs> okay, and then the last book I read in that read 
reading vlog was 28 Summers by Ellen Hildebrand. I didn't finish this in the vlog and I remember saying I was gonna like table it and maybe not even finish it that month. I, but honestly, I was so far into the story. So I just kept reading it. I listened to it in the car when I was driving for work and then I think I finished like physically read the last maybe like 50 to 100 pages. Basically, if you've never heard of 28 Summers before, this is marketed as a contemporary romance novel set on the island of Nantucket. We basically follow one woman's relationship with a man over the course of 28 summers they basically have a same time next year deal where they just see each other on a holiday weekend every year without fail regardless of what's going on in their regular lives and they see each other romantically obviously and throughout the book obviously there are spouses and partners involved children become involved and they continue to see each other every year for 28 years so overall not my favorite premise in the whole world I don't really love reading about cheating just because let me rephrase I don't love reading about cheating in situations in which we are supposed to be actively rooting for the characters involved in the cheating like if it's more just like a commentary sure I guess but like this is being marketed to me as a romance and I just genuinely am not experiencing it like that because I cannot root for them do you know what I mean it's just it's so so interesting to me for sure definitely not my personal cup of tea however <laughs> I will say I didn't hate it like I feel like it really kind of sounded like I wasn't loving it in my reading vlog but I think what it boiled down to for me is this writing Ellen Hildebrand is clearly good at writing like it was very atmospheric I was really immersed when I was reading I wanted to be on Nantucket desperately and I ended up really caring about Mallory as a person and specifically in relationship to her son like I really liked reading their relationship and like their ordinary lives I did not care for Jake I never connected emotionally to Jake the love interest um I never cared for the relationship and I was never rooting for them. And so ultimately this just did not read like a romance to me at all. I ultimately ended up enjoying it as more of like a literary fiction or vibe situation. And I didn't hate it. Again, I actually found myself getting emotional in the very end of it, which I wasn't expecting. And I do appreciate having read it. With all that being said, I did settle on three stars as my final rating. I wouldn't go out of my way to recommend this to somebody, especially if they usually have issues with cheating in books, because I can see how this would really rub people the wrong way. If you do connect with these characters and resonate with the romance power to you this was really not my thing that's okay reading is so subjective so anyways three stars I would very much like to pick up another Ellen Hildebrand book because I think I know I really liked her writing I just think it was this story specifically that I wasn't a fan of so book number three okay and then book number four I read Anxious People by Frederick Bachman this was five stars y'all this was a five star read for me I love Frederick Bachman Frederick Bachman is one of my newfound favorite authors I felt weird saying that before only having read two of the Baritone books but this book exists outside of that universe and it hit I don't want to say just as hard because Baritone kind of exists in a universe of its own. It's unlike anything I've ever read before and probably will ever read again. So this is in a different league for sure. It's definitely a different style of Frederick Bachman's as everyone says, but I loved it. If you've never heard of Anxious People before, basically this book follows a group of individuals that are at like an apartment viewing in a small town in Sweden when a bank robber that has just failed at robbing a bank across the street runs into the apartment and essentially takes them hostage as leverage to avoid getting arrested for failing to rob the bank and we basically just spend time with these people learn their backstories learn their fears and hopes and dreams and dynamics over the course of like a couple hours as they're this bank robbers hostage and yeah that's literally it I loved this this is one of those things where like maybe if it wasn't a five-star read for me like if I didn't get the five-star feeling so strongly there are things that I could pick apart about this but the way it made me feel at the very end I don't care I don't care and I don't care to pick it apart it was so good I feel like Bachman has such a distinct style that I don't think he would be for everybody. But I think the people that do resonate with what he does would love this book. First thing first. Okay, so Frederick Bachman does this in Beartown as well, where he just will drop tidbits of observations about the human experience in like an otherwise very silly and over-the-top interaction or small, quiet moment like he does in Beartown, where you just feel like someone has peeled back your skin or the skin of somebody you know and stared into the depths of the soul and then put into words something that you've always known to be true but have never put into words or maybe you have seen it in words before but it just sucker punches you when you see it in that specific context. I don't know. I don't know how he does it but he does and it works 
every time for me. I'm also realizing that I am such a sucker for like a whimsical, heartfelt, silly story. Last month, I think last month, I read House in the Cerulean Sea and gave it five stars because it was one of those things where it's so over the top and goofy and silly, but it really speaks to your heart. I love when people are so skilled at writing that they know how to boil things down to be so human even when they're silly. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's such, it's so impressive to me and it's gonna get me every time. It's gonna make me cry every single time. <laughs> I've also always been a sucker for like invisible string moments in books. Like if somebody can like subtly weave together multiple stories and then do like a ta-da, this person is part of this person's life in this way kind of thing, it gets me every time. It gives me chills. I love it. I'm always so impressed. Authors can weave together stories like that so deftly and in this one he does and I love it. I love it. <laughs> I wrote down in my notes like in the moment when I finished. Was I obsessed with the pacing of this book in the beginning? No. Was it goofy and over the top and unrealistic? Yes. Was I crying every third page and experiencing full body chills every time he successfully tied something together yes i'll be thinking about this one for a long time just like bear town me and frederick are like this if you can't tell would highly recommend again i know that his writing probably won't work for everyone but if you think it might i highly recommend okay and then the last one's a bit of a doozy because i have thoughts but they're not super clear even though i spent like 20 minutes today writing them out i read funny story by emily henry it was my book club's book for the month and we actually i'm so sad we didn't end up having book club and i wish we had because i wish i could have really talked it through with people that have read it and figured out where i fell on the rating scale because i still don't really know um yeah I know this book is everywhere right now, but if you don't know what Funny Story is about, basically it is a romance that follows Miles and Daphne, who are roommates currently because both of their exes, Daphne's ex-fiance and Miles's ex-girlfriend, dumped them to be with each other because they were like childhood friends that realized that they were actually in love with each other. Daphne has to move out of her ex's house. She asks Miles if he needs a roommate. They're living together. The premise is actually so fun. She's a children's librarian. She had relocated to this small town in Michigan, I think, for her fiance and like was living in his house etc etc and so she's kind of having to like figure out if she wants to stay and at first she like really really doesn't and basically the two of them sort of fall into a combo situation of fake dating and then also miles trying to show her how much he loves about the town to convince her to stay because he wants her to love being there and i really liked it i feel like i was being super ominous in the beginning did really enjoy myself i really liked that it started out platonic and then developed into something more gradually like i really felt the development and I felt the tension and that part was really good. I think I did this book a big disservice. This was my most anticipated read of 2024. Huge Emily Henry fan. I love every book of hers that I've ever read. I just think she is such a good writer and I love her characters and I love her worlds and it's just so fun. Happy Place is my favorite book of hers. One of my few six star reads I've ever had. I actually reread it recently and I fear that I went into this book with six star expectations and it did not meet them. The thing is with Emily Henry's books, regardless of the content, her writing is so good that I'm gonna enjoy myself okay I'm gonna enjoy myself regardless of anything else first and foremost okay basically I wrote things in my notes so that I could talk about this with nuance because I want to be clear <laughs> when I finished the book I had warm and fuzzy feelings because I had really enjoyed myself and I binged the last like like 150 pages all at once it wasn't a five star feeling though did I log it as five stars on my goodreads yes is that because I wanted it so badly to be a five star and also my roommate had just read it and she gave it five stars and I really was convincing myself that it was five stars yes i'm somewhere between four and four and a half and i think i'm gonna settle on four and a half for now but i already want to reread it because i feel like i read it so fast and i had different expectations that i would feel differently about it now i'm really fighting the urge to like reread emily henry's entire catalog for a week this summer maybe even this month but i know that that would push like all my other priority books to the wayside but i just i'm so curious to know now that i've read her entire catalog i'm more like well read than i was when i first started reading her catalog that i'm just i'm so curious to know how everything would fall i'm gonna give you my tentative thinking here in a second. Basically, I really enjoyed the setting of the book, but it didn't feel as like atmospheric or immersive as Happy Place did. And I wasn't as like emotionally connected to the side characters in this, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like we ended the book on a very like ensemble character moment and I wasn't super emotionally attached to them, which made me feel kind of weird. Also sometimes did not feel super emotionally attached to Daphne. Like I feel like I didn't know her that well, which was a weird feeling and might've just been because I read it so fast. Cause there were definitely certain things about her and her personality that I read resonated with but then sometimes I was like wait then also do get introduced to Miles's backstory with his family but I feel like it was kind of like unfinished and not super fleshed out which is fine but it feels like it was such a big part of the plot and it was a little bit unresolved
resolved, which again is fine because that's a very realistic thing. Like people don't get resolution from that kind of stuff a lot. But I don't know. It was just something that was kind of nagging at me towards the back of the book. But all of that being said, I loved the romance. I loved the way it developed. I loved the banter, the spice, the tension. All of it was so good. They had a lot of really sweet moments, a lot of like quotes that I really, really loved. Like I think one of them was like, laughs and I can't hear it and I feel robbed of the sound. So I had to give credit where credit's due. I just for some reason am finding this to fall lower on my Emily Henry scale in previous books. And again, I think it's because of Happy Blake. Right now I'm settling on four and a half stars. We will have to see as I continue to ruminate, but yeah. <laughs> as of right now, I think Emily Henry ranking is what we meet on vacation, funny story, book lovers, beach read, happy place. I don't know. <laughs> that being said though, would highly recommend. I always recommend Emily Henry's books. Again, reading is so subjective and just because it didn't hit as hard for me does not mean it's not gonna hit as hard for you. So I highly recommend because it was fun and cute and I loved Miles. So yeah, book number five. <laughs> So <laughs> these are the five books that I read in the month of May, kind of all over the place in terms of how I felt about them, but overall feeling really good. I think I took some things off my list that have been on there for a while, aka 28 Summers. I think I got her last summer. Got to a highly anticipated release, read another book from a favorite author, just overall feeling like it was a good reading month, even if it was a slower and lower quantity reading month. So anyways, I think that's it. Thank you guys for listening to me ramble. I did try and like gather my thoughts beforehand this time, and I can't tell if it made me talk more or less. I guess I'll find out when I'm editing, so. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>